of the house, my charming wife, Eliza. How do you do, Lady Whitley? It's madam to you. My apologies, madam. Eliza, this is the fine young maid we have been so eagerly awaiting. Miss Cotetta. Crimson Rose. Yes, I could see she was the maid, Hagen. Besides, it's rather rare to get visitors all the way out here. I trust your journey was pleasant. Well, let's not waste my time standing around. I'll give her the tour. I'd very much like that. It's not for you to like. It's a necessity. I have many house rules. I don't wish to repeat more than once. I'll show her around, Eliza. You shall certainly not, Hagen. You have matters to attend. Come along, Cordetta, darling.
The house has 32 rooms. In time, you will learn your way around, but you are not to go exploring. Cordetta. What's on the top floor? That's the door to the attic. The door's to remain locked at all times and is out of bounds to you and the children. Come along, I'll show you to your room. bigger than my father's house. I don't doubt it. But it's not me you have to thank. My husband looks far too kindly upon the servants in this house. Wretched groundskeepers, Silas included. I hadn't expected this kindness from him. Hagen is stubborn in his demands, but believe me, he does not know kindness. Listen to me closely, Cordetta. My husband is a sick man with an unhinged mind. And whilst he may seem all the more welcoming compared to me, my duty is to run this house and to raise our children. Tasks for which he offers little help. His charm is but a trail of breadcrumbs which you'll be wise not to follow. Mind your business while you're here. You may enter, Silas. You can start by unpacking her things. Put what clothes she has in the wardrobe. Oh, no, no, please. That's the most kind, but I'd rather unpack myself. Nonsense, girl. You haven't got time to waste. We've got a lot of ground to cover, and I want you started right away. Please. Be careful. That's very precious to me. What's that? My pocket watch. A broken pocket watch. One more fit to belong to a rich man rather than a young maid. Of what use is a broken pocket watch? It belonged to my brother. It's very special to me. And it's everything I have of him. Well, as long as you have a functional timekeeping device to accompany it, I run a strict schedule in this house, and I will not tolerate lateness. Be careful with the rest of her clatter, will you? Children, your father wishes me to introduce you to our new maid. Her name is Cordetta. But you may call her an English name if you prefer. This is Agatha, Evelyn, my youngest, and my son, Adriel. Pleasure to meet you, children. But mother, she's black. She's your father's choice, Agatha. And we must respect his decision. He has asked you to make her feel welcome. Welcome? But doesn't she know what happened here? Adriel! She soon will. Her ghost still walks the halls at night. That's quite enough of your nonsense. Sorry, Mother. Cordetta will serve supper at seven o'clock. I want you to be at the table and waiting for prayer. Yes, yes mother. mother. Now back to your studying. Evelyn, I would like you to show Cordetta back to her room. She has things to unpack. This is yours. Thank you, Evelyn. It's not true, you know, about the ghost. They like to tease. I don't believe in ghosts, Evelyn. But if I did, they wouldn't scare me half as much as the living. I recognize that watch. Well, I imagine it's a common make, but to me it can't be replaced. I apologize if I seemed rude before. It's not a common make. I knew a man, a very wealthy nobleman, who owned one peculiarly similar. 
May I ask where your brother acquired it? No, you may not. Do not touch my things. You know the last maid died in that room? It's an old house. I'm sure lots of people died here. But how many were murdered? Murdered? Took a lot of hard work to clean the blood from those floorboards. Even the room below, when the gore trickled through, Drench brought Adler in his sleep. Steer clear of Lady Whipley when she gets into a fit of jealous rage. Armed with a straight razor, she can be deadly. Get out! Of course. The room's all yours. Not long after my arrival, we were joined by a new member of the house. Damien de Haan was to be engaged to Agatha, at the stern request of Lady Whitley. And I soon became a part of this strange family and a part of Black Rock Manor. On the first day of every month, she would leave the house to visit her twin sister who lived in the village far below, and she'd return with supplies, everything the family might need. It was merely days before my treasured pocket watch went missing whilst I slept, and I suspected Silas had entered my room at night and stolen it from me. They mustn't uncover the true reasons as to why I am here. Mysterious occurrence, Mom. I haven't a clue. Get up! My husband is gone. You're going out to sleep. 
such the hillside. Hurry, go! You are to head out into the hills and find my husband. Do not return without him. Is that understood? Finding Master Whipley on this dark winter's night seems an impossible task, ma'am. We'd fare better to begin this search at daybreak. We'll freeze out there. You will not be welcomed back into this house empty-handed. Silent. I'm sorry, mother. I'm just so tired. Fine. I will stay in your sister's room tonight. You're not to be left alone. We've searched through the night and found no trace of your husband. It's as if he's completely vanished. A person cannot simply vanish. Please, we are tired and need rest. And this house needs its master. Perhaps he's fled now. Perhaps he doesn't wish to return. Then perhaps he can take his useless servants with him. <laughs> What do you think has happened to Father? Perhaps he saw something that scared him so much he had to run away. Or he saw a ghost. What are you, eight years old still? I know you've heard too, Agatha. The girl crying in the night. Stop it. Footsteps await me from my sleep when nobody's there. What footsteps? In the room next to mine. The room is locked, Adria. I'm telling you what I know. It's a ghost. It's the maid. She's come back for us all. You don't think it really was Silas who killed her? Why don't you ask him? No, he mustn't. But this isn't the first time that one of us is awoken covered in blood. It's a little strange, don't you think?
always locked. I swear it was open. There's something up there. You know it's forbidden for you to enter the attic. I, I just thought maybe it was father. Well, it isn't. Well, something is. There's nothing up there but spiders and cobwebs, Agatha. Just a dusty old attic that is unsafe for you to enter. I simply don't want you getting hurt. myself stranded by this deathly storm which has claimed my horse. I seek shelter before it claims me too. Who are you? How did you find this house? I will explain everything if you'll just save me from this hellish downpour. Please. Wait. If your servants were bringing my trunk from the rain, it's heavy, but the contents are most fragile. Bring it inside. I'm very grateful for your kind hospitality, Miss. You may stay here for tonight only. When the storm has passed, you must leave. Of course. Frankly, your misfortune is not a problem my family or I wish to be burdened with. Believe me, we have enough of our own. Leave that dirty old thing in the lobby. I don't want it dripping all over the house. I think the stairs will kill us. Don't make me change my mind, Silas. I'm sure we can provide all he needs for a comfortable night. Take a seat at the table. Cordetta will provide you something warm to drink. Most kind. Your coat, sir. Wonderful to see you again, sir. It's been a long, long time. for my alarming appearance. My white mare Abraxas was sadly decapitated by a bolt of lightning. Decapitated? She rode on headless for about another hundred yards, blood spewing from the severed stump of her neck, before collapsing in a muddy ditch and leaving me for the storm. I can still taste her warm, salty blood in my throat. I had hoped the rain would have washed it clean by the time I arrived at Black Rock. You don't have anything stronger by chance. Drinking is forbidden in this house. My mistake. 
This is Blackrock Manor, is it not? Where were you headed? A long time ago, as your uh, elderly servant may recall, there was a very exclusive purlieu high up in this valley. Its location was somewhat secret, so um, only a select few would visit, and by invitation only, of course. I'd heard stories in the valley below where to find it, but Abraxas and I... Well, you know the rest. What are you doing? I need something from my room. It's too cold in here. Don't let your mother catch you on your own. I'll be quick. Mom, but you're fast asleep. You look tired, Mother. The storm has passed, has it not? Then I assume you're ready to leave. Or can't he stay for dinner? No, he cannot. I sent for a carriage to pick him up so that he may return safely to the village. Then where is it? Unfortunately, Mom, I've been told the road is obstructed by a fallen tree. But they will have it clear in a day or two. Surely you cannot expect him to journey on foot with that heavy trunk. Out! Pack your things now. I wish to speak to my family alone. this. It doesn't belong to me. And it certainly hasn't been hidden by my children. Cordetta. Save the performance, the pair of you. Whose knife is this? Does belong to me, ma'am. Correct! And the blood, I suspect, belongs to Hagen. What in God's name am I supposed to think? That knife has been missing for months, ma'am. In a house this size, things go missing. And people too, so it seems. One of you has used this knife. One of you has hidden it. And one of you knows exactly what has happened to my husband, and you will tell me at once! Madam, neither one of us has a clue. Do you think we'd be out all night searching if we knew where he was? Do not try to pull the wool over my eyes, Cordetta. I am not. I'm only trying to help solve this mystery. Then perhaps you can solve this. Blood on your nightdress. Blood is my own. Speak up, girl! Cover that disgusting thing up! Children, to your rooms now! I do not get an answer soon. I will be forced to use extreme methods to uncover the truth. Whatever mother's hiding in the attic is driving her completely mad. 
I swear to you, Evelyn, I saw something. A person, a creature, hiding amongst the cobras in the dust beneath the rafters. We have to find a way up there. Tonight, you would go up there in the middle of the night. Not alone. Don't look at me, Agatha. I most certainly won't be venturing up there with you. But what's up there, Evelyn? What's behind that door that's so terrible that Mother doesn't want us to see? I don't want to find out. But we must. Whatever it is, whatever happened to Father, why that stranger's here. I have a bad feeling it's all coming from up there. watching over stuff. Play it again. Stop! Mercury. That was on the back of one of the photos. Look. Eliza and Mercury, Black Rock. Been taken about twenty or thirty years ago. It's all right, they went in there. Look at the jungle near it. Quiet, Evelyn. It could be father. It was a father. There's a sort of creature, like you said. Agatha.
bien. Look, Adriel. Look at the pictures. That's mother pregnant, and look, there she is again. Yes. Look at the dates. So? So, they were both taken in the same month according to the handwriting. One moment she's pregnant, and the next... Somebody could have mixed up the dates. I think it must be her sister, a twin. It's possible that she stayed here while she was expecting us. She never mentioned that. When did she ever mention her past? Don't forget the that. Right. There's a photo of mother here, with a girl. A young girl named Mercury. A strange name. Children? Jesus, Cortessa, don't you ever knock? Where did you find these photographs? They're private. In the attic. Evelyn! What? She's not going to tell Mother, are you? Not if they're private. I'm very sorry I disturbed you. Silas, something, some sinister thing from the past still walks the halls. Father is missing because of it, and that stranger is here because of it too. There are some things you're better off not knowing. The past is much better buried. Well then answer me one thing. Who's Mercury? Where did you hear that name? It's here on this picture. And look, that's Mother there too. Lady Ripley and Mercury. We didn't see it at first, and then we noticed a little girl hiding in the back. Who is she? There was a child in this house. You were not the only Whipple children. The child is dead. I'm sorry. I've said far too much. Leave these things alone, girls. Don't go looking any further. that you said that you called the other night? When exactly will it arrive? Carriage. The one that you called to take our peculiar visitor far away from this house. Ah, that carriage. When the road is clear, I'm sure one will come. You asked to see me, Eliza? Close the door behind you. That's Agatha's private journal. What are you doing reading those pages? Sit. Forgive me, Damien. But I found it left open upon her bed. I could not help but spy the detestable words written upon the page. I was glad to take it from her. Detestable words. She doesn't leave her journal out. You must return it immediately before she notices it. Just look, Dan. It concerns you. Of course it does. We're engaged to one another. Not if one were to believe these words. She's known this stranger barely a day, and already she fantasizes about running off with him and leaving you and I behind. 
Can you believe that? A handsome young gentleman like you. I should see you cast aside. I'll talk to her, Eliza. Nonsense, Damien. You can see the passion with which she writes. How long has she been thinking of leaving you behind? What other men might have engaged her lust after you were gone? Then, what do I do? You do still wish to marry into this family, don't you? You plan to stay here with me. No, I don't. Then we must separate them before this silliness can go any further. It's for the girl's own good. How? I have a simple plan. But I need a brave, strong man to help me. I don't want to hurt her, Eliza. Not hurting him. Dearest Agatha, I am leaving Black Rock tonight and I wish to take you with me. Are you coming to get ready for bed, Agatha? Wait for me alone in your room and I will come for you at the strike of midnight. Tell no one. Just one minute. Love, your visitor. What is he? I found something of yours outside. Something of mine, you say? Do you know what it is? Of course you don't. I know why you've come to this house and what you want from this family. Do tell me. Tell me what I want, Damien. I don't want you in this house a moment longer. You know what? I think I'll stay a while. Agatha already seems taken with you. And Adriel. 
Just you watch, the rest will follow. But if you like, I can leave that cold, stiff old woman you're so fond of. She's all yours to play with. What is it that so strongly attracts them to you, I wonder? You don't have to wonder. If you want to know... You're right. I could have you right here if I wanted to. Nobody would know. I could chain you to the wall and tell them you've left. And that was me thinking I was about 30 years too young for you. It'll be years before they found you. And then, night after night, I could return here. And we could do horrible, pleasurable things. You know, Damien, you're making me very hard. You know where he is, don't you? You know what's going on. I know that was your knife. It belongs to Silas, yes, but I've seen you with it these past weeks. Are you trying to frame him for some ungodly act? I'm afraid my aim is... It's far more complicated than that. So you do know about the knife? I'm not gonna lie to you, Evelyn. Not to you. I'm only trying to protect you. From what? Tell me what's going on. Tell me who the stranger is. That I do not know. Then at the very least, tell me where I can find my father. I can tell you he's indeed left this house. I'm doubtful he'll ever return. How can you say that to me so cold? I'm his daughter. Believe me when I say it's better he is gone. Better for who exactly? For you, Evelyn. Things happen in this house that you do not see. Things you would rather not know. Tell me. I wish I could. I will not leave until you tell me. I can keep a secret. If you don't, I will tell Mother and she'll punish you. I see the scar she leaves on your back. That was not a punishment. That was done in pleasure by your father. You are too sweet to understand these things. He beat you for fun. Is that what you're telling me? No, Evelyn. It is a fetish for him. A sexual desire. He strips me down. Ties me to the bedpost. Cuts me, burns me. And when he's hard and drooling at the mouth like a hound, he has me. I was hired for that purpose and nothing more. I, I, I didn't realize the extent of his cruelty. I'm not finished. You asked for the truth and now you will hear it. I can handle his sick pleasures. I could leave here any time I wanted. And believe me, I've so often thought about running. Running before your mother finds out and has me sliced open at the veins. But if I left Evelyn, how would I ever see you? What does that matter? It matters because my heart has grown so very fond of you. I had not expected it, but I've uncovered a kind of desire I never knew I could feel. Your father over time could see my love for you and how I despised him so greatly. 
There are no boundaries to what that man will do, even to his own daughter. All just to spite and control me. Stop! I've heard enough. help the way I feel for you. It's put you in great danger. Please. Please understand me. Edna. What are you doing out of bed? She said she loves me. And she tell me horrible things about her and father. Get upstairs now. Now! I have seen the way you look at her. As if my own flesh and blood could muster up pity, let alone love for an ugly dog like you. You're done with this family. Do you hear me? With those beastly black ears, you're out! You'll never lay eyes on my daughter again, Cordetta. I'm sorry, Eliza. I didn't mean to. Drag that heap of waste out of the road and leave it for the wolves.
I'm sorry, Adriel. I've let a devil into this house, and he has tempted you and stained your innocence. He has given you an illness. You're to stay in this room until I see fit for you to leave. Stay in this bed and pray, child. Pray for God's forgiveness. You put it on, darling. And I'm not here going to take it off. You can wear this shame on your face, Adriel, for all of us to see. I've brought you this. You must be very hungry. It's to remind you that you've made a terrible, terrible mistake. It's all very touching and romantic, sweetheart. But I'm afraid you've scared our house guest away. He's gone. Not before he stole the key to your room. No, he would never. I know the rejection will hurt, but nobody can love a woman who commits her heart to one man, yet writes pathetic poetry about another. That was on his bedside. He must have crept into your room. I fear to imagine what he was after. I have committed my heart to no one. You have done with it what you desire and offered me to a man I care nothing for! You will stay locked in this room until you have learned to be grateful! <laughs> Sorry, Cordetta. It's not your fault. If you had no interest in me then, you'll find me disgusting now. I look like a monster. You of all people are not a monster. You're brave and kind. And I realise I probably owe you a great deal. At the very least, an apology. Dear boy, you ought to be more careful around your mother. You don't understand these pleasures. She does. Pleasures? She'd have me starved to death wearing that torture device. Then why did you put it on? Because he asked me to. Hmm. I'm sure he did. 
And did you enjoy wearing it for him? It's all right. You can tell me. Mother says I have an illness. So what? I have an illness too then, if that's what she calls it. But you stay away from this stuff. You don't want to venture so far, you lose your way. You, there's nothing to be scared of. I found you tied to his bed. Cut you free. What is that silence? Something of mine I found in the attic. Locked up with our whole dirty past. That's where I found this. It belonged to your father, you know. Let's say we had an agreement that benefited both our greatest fantasies. Oh, I was older, of course, which he enjoyed. But more handsome back then. And he was the prettiest boy. Just like you, really. Looking for someone to make him a slave to their most lustful and primal urges. He and your mother settled down. But the temptations were all still there. For you? No, child. Your mother would never have kept me in this house if she suspected we'd ever repeat the things we did. She proposed a simple remedy. And I agree. You guarantee I'd stay away. But I would have given even more to ensure I didn't leave him. You stay in this room, Adrian. It's safer to stay out of her way. I will bring you everything you need. Silas. Do you know where my father is? Yes. He's either in a lot of trouble or a lot of pleasure that will get him into trouble. Old habits do die hard. This, my son, but in returning to this house, I have condemned myself to a certain and dreadful death. What are you talking about? I had to come back. I had to. I couldn't go without telling you one last thing. She knows. She knows. Only her and Silas. My God. Can't you see he's returned completely insane? Silas, woman! Let him speak. There is an imposter in this house. That woman is not your mother. We made an oath, an oath never to tell. But your mother, your real mother, died in this house 
long ago. And she... Have you believe her lies? Even when I'm dead. The man doesn't know what he's talking about. Surely you can see these are the lies of a madman. Enough, Eliza! You've seen the pictures, Mother. They must have been taken many years ago back when we were only children. That leads me to believe that Father is telling the truth. Pictures? Of what? Of Some perverted sex cult. <laughs> Damien, take them back to their rooms. Just do it, Damien! I, I don't care whether you have to drag them kicking or screaming. Just get them away from him before he poisons their minds anymore! Poisons their minds? You would call a thing or two of a poisoning their minds. Rotting Christ! She has let the devil into this house! <laughs> I cannot deny that the man may well have gone mad, but presently he speaks the truth. But you told me that a child had died in this house. Mercury, the girl from the photographs. No. no. Then who was it? The little girl in the photograph is you, Agatha. Mercury is the servant. But you told me a child had died. Your unborn sibling, still growing inside the womb of Eliza's twin, your mother. We can only suspect how the creature got into her locked room at night, but the beast ventured in all the same. Serpent slithered up inside her in the night, curled up with the baby growing in her womb, and feasted on its half developed fetus, poisoning her sister from the inside out. She died before they could even uncover where the snake had gone. But when the blood soaked creature looked out from between the legs of her cold, stiff corpse, Everybody knew what had happened. Tragic accident, they said, though some suspected murder. We locked her body in your father's old trunk and hid the damn thing in the attic, along with the rest of our simple possessions, and prayed we could forget. It took quite a toll on you, Liza. The death of a sister can be a most painful thing, especially when the creature was her own. To leave this house. It's not safe for us here. Mother would never let me. She's not your mother, Evelyn. Your father has returned with malefic revelations. I have no time to explain. You must pack your things tonight. We'll live. Just the two of us. Far away from this place. Somewhere she'll never find us. 
You must do as I say. There's just one more thing I have to do. Almost two decades of living a lie. As you had wished. All ruined. Have you entirely lost your mind? I must have to return to these oppressive walls. Where have you been? Running. But you can't run from your sins, Eliza. We made an oath. Do you care nothing for the sacrifices I have made? They've grown up, Eliza. They're old enough to understand what we did. We were. And you don't think they'll despise us for it? You, most of all. That is for them to decide. I grow weary of your reign over this family. It is the old dominatrix in you trying to break out. That's just what you want, isn't it? This whole facade to come crashing down so you can return to your diabolical ways. I already have. Long ago. Where do you think I find all these beautiful mates? You're an old man, Malhawk. We have long passed our prime while living this dull pretense, raising her children. And it was the very least you owed her. I'd rather be in the ground with her than stay here a moment longer. It is easily remedied, my love. Perhaps I can take you with me, Harley. Perhaps we can dive into the flames and burn! Like the devil's wheel! Get your hands off him! Tell me you've fallen in love with him too. I know what the pair of you have been up to behind my back. You and all the countless mates before! <laughs> Those scars on your back proved everything, Cordetta. I have them too. may be old and faded, but the memories are, are still as vivid as if, it were, as if it were only yesterday. I despise him and everything he's done, but he is mine to kill. So it was you. do these vile things to me, but you will not lay a hand on Evelyn. Uh, uh, now, you will leave this house, Master Whitley, and if I ever see your face here again, I will spill your guts across this floor. <laughs> Go on then, Hagen. Fuck off with your black whore of Satan. I made a promise to Evelyn not to kill you, not her mother. Stay out of my way.
Sasha? Already you have stopped calling me mother? Have you so swiftly forgotten the years I mothered you and raised you? It's true, you know. Every damn word of it. Everybody looked to my sister like she was some kind of pure saint. <laughs> we weren't all that angelic. When we were just girls, we'd go out on the street and offer ourselves for money. Only difference being, I always enjoyed it. Even when they left me bruised. I loved the touch of the tough hands all over my young silk skin. Right up into the warm, wet slit between my thighs. Oh, I was never going to be one to settle down with a husband I could love. What I held on to in my heart was variety. A lady with my desires gets bored so easily. Then I found Black Rock Manor, a tranquil, grand paradise, so typically boring of my sister. She was obsessed with money, anything to better herself. Well, she was a smart girl, far smarter than me, but she must have been tortured by lust right up until the day she died. And Hagen, the man she grew to love, he was different then. I could see that the moment he laid eyes on me. I could see what he was thinking, even with my sister stood right beside him. For when darkness fell outside this manor, an age-old tradition, a burden passed down by his father, I think, ran riot in these walls. If only they could tell of all the wonderful perversities that happened here. I suppose that's why I always liked it. I felt at home here, with the help of my diamond back rattlesnake, Mercury. Mercury, I called it. I would put on a seductive display of domination and sadomasochistic pleasure that would drive men wild by the dozen. They'd come from miles just to watch me and have me all under Hagen's jealous nose. The curse of twins is that he'd never be able to hide the fact that he found me irresistible. I was my sister, but with all the benefits a man could lust for. She wanted children, a house, a dull life, and I wanted men. As many as I could have, and I wanted their breath and their sweat and every orgasmic fluid they could pump into my body. And I wanted Hark, him most of all, because he belonged to her. And even with everybody at my feet, I I needed him to want me. And he did. Despite the three pretty children and the fourth growing in your mother's womb, we gave each other every kind of pleasure we wanted. Right up until the day she died. If your father ever had a heart, it was truly broken. And he grew to hate me for it. I began to miss her. And no matter how much fucking I managed, and no matter how many times he beat me in a violent rage, I was numb. I think it's sad. You have three children, and this is what you think about. You're not my children. 
you'll always be hers. Wretched little orphans scuttling about like lost insects, waiting to be stamped on by the cruel realities of this world. No one wants to listen to your sick fantasies, you twisted witch. You're just a used up old piece of furniture that this house has claimed. Fallen from sight underneath the gathering dust. For a man engaged to my daughter? No. Listen, Master Ripley. I'm leaving this house immediately. I want no part of this trouble. Seems that marrying into my family's fortune comes at a much higher price than you thought. But no one near as high the price of playing the accomplice. That's what happened, Damien. Just take back. Can we agree on a fair punishment? My greasy little fly. Perhaps I could stab you in your throat and throw your body down the well. It's like a man once told me. Violent desires. Young Master Whipley does not wish to see you, ma'am. I have come to make things right. What I did was very unkind. I want to ensure that he gets better. I'm making sure of that. Well then, I've prepared a cool jug of water for him. I will at least keep the pair of you hydrated. She's either realised the errors of her ways, or she's deranged. Either way, you need to stay hydrated for your wound to heal. I'm not thirsty, Silas. Please. You should drink, Adrian. I 
want to thank you for what you're doing for me. For all these years, we've been made to fear you. <laughs> Like a muddied spring or a polluted fountain is a righteous man that gives way before the wicked. <laughs> you why. Why I came here from the very beginning. See, when I was a little girl, I had an older brother, and he was hired by some wealthy family to leave our home and work for them far away. One day, we simply stopped hearing from him. Nobody knew where he was. Nobody dared to ask. He'd never leave his little sister without a word. I knew something terrible had happened. So when I reached an appropriate age, I went looking for this remote manor house where he'd served. The word among the other young girls spread of your strange, secretive rituals. <laughs> I had to rub the hairs I clipped from a dead mouse between my thighs to finally get that snake to come to me. There was no way I wasn't going to be the one to get into this family. You do remember my brother. The boy was too curious for his own good. Saw too much of him. And he was a thief! So, whether he liked it or not, we made him take part. Seven or eight men. Silas and I. All going at him like a rag dog. That's what ended the boy. I recall the eyes rolling in the back of his skull. After about three hours of it. And that Hagen Whipley. Is why I came to see you die. <laughs>
I remember when I had a fine young body like yours. I'd envy anyone who got more attention than me. That wasn't many, though. Soft, smooth, unwrinkled skin. It soon fades away, darling. Like a wilted flower, irreversibly rotting over time. What a foul disease is age. But all the more foul, when youth fades prematurely. That's something I've helped you with over the years, raising you girls. Whether you thank me for it or not, you still have so much to enjoy. Such pristine, untouched bodies to explore with. And what thanks do I get? You throw it back in my face. Well, I'm still the one raising you. You're still under my control. And I say you don't deserve me. Or laugh. Or any of the things I've sacrificed to help you resentful creatures. You leave this shut. And if any man tries to have you, he'll tear one off. Whole of flesh right between your thighs that no man will ever want. It's my gift to you, darling. The gift of eternal innocence. So you'll never have to become like your wicked old whore of an illegitimate mother. Ha 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 ha!